Hello everyone, it's Karen. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do another vinyl update. This is vinyl update number 39. Quite a good number. Um, we're getting near to 40. So we've done a lot of these vinyl updates over the last few years. Um, I will admit. Um, finally remembered a number because I always used to forget when I make these vinyl updates the numbers of ones I've done. But they've done pretty well to remember. Um, but in case I go back and make a mistake again, I might go, oops, the wrong number. But um, I think we're at 39. So um, anyways, this is going to be a video of stuff I've acquired over the last month. Uh, it's like vinyls, CDs, DVDs, 45s, and I think a book as well. So um, we're going to start with the um, CDs. I've got a lot of these places from like online. I was away with my dad the weekend just recently. Uh, no, uh, a month ago uh, in England. We went to Hartenden. We were in Bedford. So I've got a few Bedford purchases as well to show. And uh, some stuff in Hartenden as well. So uh, we're gonna start with the CDs, the ones I got from the first three ones I got from Bedford. So these two first two come from an Oxfam, and they're Queen related. So you'll be interested to see these. Uh, Queen Live Killers. This is the 1979 live album, uh, two CD set. Of course, the vinyl's a double album as well. This is from like the 1979 tour, which I've got the vinyl of. I can just see as you can see here. That's the vinyl. Um, see the top of that. Two discs, and it's got this sort of. A lot of these old CDs I have from like the two thousands come with these sort of real tone and things on your mobile. I presume they're, they're probably not going to be any use to me, but eh, it's quite interesting that the person that had this before me included this on their um, in their CD copy. Because this is a uh, what's this one? This is the two thousand and three, I think, remastered version of it. So. I'll be from around about that time. So there's that one. The other one is Freddie Mercury, the solo set. This is a um, three CD set containing his first his solo album, Mr. Bad Guy, which I've got on, uh, again, which I also have on um, on vinyl, just here. And, uh, oh, try to back in. Hold on. Oh, ah, sorry about this. <laughs> Um, and uh, the album it also has the album Barcelona as well with Monster Cabelli. That's how you say her name. And a CD called bonus CD of like different recordings as well. So um, here's the booklet, which explains all the tracks and all the releases. The bonus CD contains things like single edits and um, remixes, um, and even the single he did under the pseudonym of Larry Lurex called um, "I Can Hear Music" from 1973, just before. Queen really sort of made it big. Um, so yeah, cool to have that one. Here's the bonus CD. So this CD came out in 2000. This set came out in 2000. There's the disc of the bonus CD. And here's the regular CD. There's just one and two. So yeah, really nice set to have. I'd never seen it before, so I thought, yeah, I'll definitely pick that one up. Um, these two came from the Oxfam, I can see. And this next CD came from a record shop in Bedford, which I went to, I think it was like a coffee shop slash record shop thing, which is quite an interesting concept to have. And the CD I found was this was Elvis as recorded at Madison Square Garden. I've got the vinyl of this one, um, like I've probably shown. Uh, I'm not going to probably get that. I'm going to try and find that. Yeah, I have the vinyl here. Now I've got the CD, so I have uh, I have both now. And this is the original album, so this is the evening show. Cause I do have the afternoon show and CD as well. And this is I think a nineteen nineties a nineties reissue because it's got the, the Elvis in the nineties sticker on it. This is from like nineteen ninety two. The CD. I have seen quite a few other people show these kind of CDs with the Elvis in the nineties sticker on them. Because uh, I've watched quite a lot of Elvis Presley people showing their Elvis Presley collections as well. As a disc, and the sound of this one's actually really good. Although this is a 1990s release, it does sound real. The sound quality of this one is actually really good. Next, we have the Johnny Cash, this, the Complete Sun Masters, which I got this from my record shop in Sawcuts. I'd never seen it before, so I thought, thought I'd pick it up. This has his Sun material as well as alternate versions and demo versions and alternate takes and overdubs as well that have been on different Sun releases as well. So I kind of got a re interest in the Johnny Cash Sun. Records era. It has a booklet and it has these three CDs. There's one nice picture of Johnny. And three. And 
all the CDs look like this. And it has a book as well, a booklet. With like, talks about each track and all the recordings as well. And if the versions had been previously released as well. Here's a nice picture of him with Sam, Sam Phillips, who was the owner and producer of Sun Records. So I've kind of had a, a re-interest in the Johnny Cash Sun Records era um, these days. I've been having a bit of a big interest in that again. These next two got a charity shop. I'm not sure if I got them together or got them at a different time, but the nation's favourite Elvis songs, which is like a, a soundtrack album to the, to the ITV programme they did on him. Uh, the nation's favourite Elvis songs. There's a whole host of these like shows. All the songs. I know there's a two disc set, but this is just the one disc set. This CD came out in 2013. So, nice to have, really. This one. And this next one is uh, one that this is a kind. This is all I need in this artist. This is pretty much uncovered. The Definitive Ray Charles. Of course, everybody knows who Ray Charles is. Um, you know, rhythm and soul artist and blues artist. Um, I, I watched the film that. Um, I know of Ray Charles because he appeared in the Blues Brothers film, which is one, of, which is one, of, which is my all-time favorite film, and um, he appeared in that. And so I'd watched the um, Jamie Fox biopic um, Ray not that long ago, and it was actually quite good. And I uh, saw this in a charity shop for quite cheap. So I thought, yeah, I'd get it. Two to set. Um, he's, he's even got a HMV sticker for uh, six pound or two for ten pound as well from like years ago. So I'm covered with Ray Charles. This is all I need on Ray Charles. Um, just this two CD set will do me good. And I know Joe, me, me Mr. Mayor, but watching Joe, me, Mr. Mayor show, like, get this big CD haul, and he's been saying things like, as well, you know, this is all I need in this artist, and this this is the case for me and Ray Charles. Uh, so, yeah, good to have that one there. Okay, uh, now I've got a CD from my Soul Goods record shop recently, John Lennon Rock and Roll. I've got the 2010 Signature Remaster, but this was the 2004 edition with, like, the extra tracks on it, which is quite cool to have. Even a reprise of Just Because as well. Um, this is remixed and remastered, it says. Uh, say the 2004 edition of Rock and Roll. I hope to get the other, like the, the, the other edition of Mind Games as well in some time in New York City of both the 2010 and these versions, so I hope to get those ones as well. These next two I got from Amazon. The next three that I got from Amazon, but these two I got together, but two I got at different times. Elvis Hit Story. This is a three disc set. The first two CDs have already been released on the Elvis 30 number no. 1 CD and the second to none CD, both of which I have, but the third disc is one called The Story Continues. Which all these tracks, which. Uh, some I didn't own and some I probably had elsewhere, but there was some that I didn't own on CD before. Slide it out like that. There's disc one. Look in there. And discs two and three. There's the book. Good luck with it. It has information about the recording dates and all the release dates too and when they charted in the UK and what position. And it even comes with this. I'm not sure that's all. Which is like some ad thing that these CDs would always come with. I think I've had it in another recent CD too from somewhere. Um, which I'll try to find somewhere. There's that one. And then we get um, Aloha from Hawaii via satellite. Again, I have this one on vinyl. And I wanted to get the CD. And this is the two CD Legacy Edition, which has both the actual album and the alternate Aloha in the rehearsal show. I just did a video about this concert. Um, and it has extra songs from like the after show, like they used for the, uh, the broadcast version. Um, open up like that, two CDs. This one, just two, book in there. And the sound on the, I've only listened to the first CD so far, but the sound on this CD is great. Just as good as the vinyl, I'd say. Uh, but the alternate Aloha has been remixed. Now, I know when the alternate Aloha was released in 88, I've heard some fans say that the sound didn't sound very good. But I'm sure this one will sound really good, this alternate CD. I also have the Aloha from Hawaii DVD as well, which I've talked about as well. And this one is the original album Classics, another one of the series. But this is for the Elvis Golden Records series of the Greatest Hits albums which is interesting to, to have. I've got the first four in vinyl, which I've shown before. Oh, dropped it all there. I've got the first four in vinyl, but volume five is the only volume I'm missing. And finding volume five is really hard to find on vinyl, but I'm still gonna keep my eye out for it. Um, 
uh, there's a the songs there. These have bonus tracks. Um, um, volumes two and four and five have been rearranged track listings as well. Um, but the original vinyls I have the track listings of. But what I like about these original album classics is because I've also got a set in Simon and Garfunkel as well, is that they recreate them looking like the original vinyls, which is nice that they did that. There's the first one. 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. Elvis's Golden Records Volume 2. Volume 3. Four. And five. This is the one I'm missing, but again, I'll hopefully pick it up. Somewhere in vinyl. This is that one. So there's that one. Really nice to have that one. Good set of the gold records. Now I've got some DVDs to show. The one comes from my Sog Retro, one comes from Entertainment Exchange in Irvine, and then this the third one comes from eBay. So they're all Elvis. The Blue Hawaii film, uh, 1961 film. Uh, I haven't seen it, but should hopefully be good. I've got the soundtrack LP for it as, as well. So yeah, nice to have the DVD for it. Hope to get all the Elvis films on DVD at some point. Um, I've got a box set of um, seven films uh, that I got from Morrison's just before Christmas. So, And I've seen a couple from them, so I should hopefully watch what some other ones I've got. Elvis The Ultimate Collection. It's like documentaries from like uh, people who knew him over the years. I think from his even his road manager, Joe Esposito as well. Um... Uh, see, this has a lot of um, talks about Memphis years, television years, Hollywood years, the Memphis Mafia, who was his, like, his group of friends, circle, the comeback special in the Vegas years. I know there's a volume two of this. I'm going to definitely pick up a vol the volume two of this one um, to go with this one at some point. So there's that one. Nice to have that. And this one's really difficult to get hold of. I managed to find it on eBay. Elvis, the 68 Comeback Special Deluxe Edition DVD. This is very similar to the um, the Aloha from Hawaii DVD that I got um, last year. It has like the TV special in it, and it has excuse <coughs> me the alternate uh, footage as well that wasn't used for the broadcast. So this is really nice, and it has both the sit down and the stand up shows, and it has the if I can dream shooting segment as well. So yeah, it's got pretty much everything that was filmed there um, uh, for the special as well as ones that didn't make the special. So yeah, nice to have that. Right, in the book. Oh, everything's knocking over. I'll just uh, pick that all up. Uh, just give me a minute while I try and pick it all up. Anyway, here's the book. Now this book came, I'd known of this guy's stories for a while because he appeared in a documentary about Roy Orbison and Elton John spoke about him in his memoir and uh, the name ring a bell and then I found out that he'd had all sorts of connections with other artists I like so I thought yeah I'll definitely pick up this book and it's this book The Tastemaker by Tony King. Now Tony King was a music and a PR guy he started out at Decca Records and one of his jobs in, um, in that point was looking after some of the American artists that were coming over to England and Roy Orbison was one of them and that was how I first knew him because he appeared in a Roy Orbison documentary um, and he also worked with the Beatles in their solo years and knew them as a group as well. And um, he worked with uh, Elton John and the Rolling Stones and knew Freddie Mercury as well. So he's got a lot of great stories in this book. This is a fascinating, great read and a lot of interesting stories too that he'll tell. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much uh, because you'll need to read the book for yourself to find out. But there's a lot of great photos of here. There's him with Roy Orbison there. That's him with the... Uh, George Harrison and Phil Spector and the Ronettes. There's him with Ringo Starr and John Lennon. <clears throat> There's him with Elton John. Some more great photos there. So yeah, really, really great read. One that I really recommend if you're a music fan, um, <clears throat> because this no doubt will have a lot of great stories about people you never, about people you knew of, but you never knew about that aspect of their um, <clears throat> uh, story. So, um, okay, we're going to show the the singles. Okay, so we're going to show the 45s. And um, first one we got from a Sockets charity shop, Frank Sinatra with My Way, in 1969 on the Reprise label with. 
Blue Lace. I do quite like Frank Sinatra, he's quite good. I've also got his other hit, Strangers in the Night, which I like. <clears throat> Again, Frank Sinatra is another one of those artists where a hit's collection would all I'd be really need. A CD, someone to Ray Charles. Um, much the same. Then we have the Archies, Sugar Sugar, 1969 on RCA, which is a 60s classic there, with Melody Hill on the other side. Again, I know it's not the picture sleeve, I bought these next two, these two I'm going to show together at the Adrosson Charity Shop. When a Man Loves a Woman by Percy Sledge on Atlantic, 1966, a real 60s classic there, with Warm and Tender Love. Uh, again, I think this is probably a reissue, that one. These next four came from Hartenden when I was away with my dad uh, in February, <clears throat> so last month. I four, bought these four singles from different charity shops. This one came from the Oxfam in Harpenden. Johnny Cash, One Piece at a Time, 1976 on CBS with Go On Blues. I don't think I've ever seen the single for this one before, so yeah. But I do have the album One Piece at a Time as well. And these next three came from another Harpenden shop, which I found. They were all quite pricey, but I thought, well, I might as well pick them up. Elvis Presley with Wear My Ring Around Your Neck, 1958, RCA with uh, Don't You Think It's Time. Very early Elvis 45 I've got, and um, I, hopefully, I hope to find some of the other early Elvis 45s on the RC and HMV label, but they can be very tricky to get a hold of. But keep my fingers crossed, I'll find one out for the right price and in good condition. Um, John Lennon, Stand By Me on Apple, 1975 with Move Over Miss Cell. Unique B-side, I don't think you can get this track any elsewhere, so to find this, to have this on the original 45 b side is quite good. So yeah, nice to have that one. And this next one is Scott Walker and the Lights of Cincinnati. Got this because um, I've played this song on the show before, and it's one I was listening to quite a lot, because I've heard people in the vinyl community talk about Scott Walker, so I thought I'd get that 45. Definitely need to check out some, definitely might check out some of his other stuff as well. Um, the B-side of this one is Two Weeks Since She Gone, which is quite good. 1969 in the Phillips label. Elvis Presley, and now this next, before I talk about these next ones, um, these next ones came from a job lot on eBay of Elvis Presley singles that I picked up recently, and there was all, lo loads of these ones I didn't have, but one I actually already did, but um, doesn't hurt to have an extra of that one. They all didn't have sleeves, so I put on these like white sleeves, um, um, sleeves, because I have some spare white sleeves, so I put them in there. First one is The Girl of My Best Friend, 1960. This is a reissue, I think, from the 70s with... A mess of blues on the B side on RCA. I already had a copy of this one, but again, it was part of the lot, so it doesn't hurt to have an extra. It's Now or Never, 1960. Make me know it. One of my favourite Elvis Presley songs, Are You Lonesome Tonight, on RCA, with I Got a No. Wooden Heart, with Tonight is So Right for Love. Another great one. This is another one that's become a bit of a favourite of mine. Surrender with Lonely Man. Uh, some of these don't have the center holes. <clears throat> Kiss Me Quick and Something Blue, both from the Potluck album, but this was released as a single in 1963. You can actually hear the Beatles review that single on the Jukebox Jury BBC show. US Mail, Stay Away, 1968. Can we have changed labels here? There Goes My Everything, 1971. I really don't want to know. <clears throat> Way Down and Pledging My Love. I know I have the Moody Blue album, but it doesn't hurt to have the 45. The one I've also got the 45 of Moody Blue as well, 1977. My Way, which I think is from the Elvis in Concert LP with America the Beautiful. I think this is a French one. So that's it for the Elvis 45 job lot. Um, I still hope to find the other Elvis Presley 45s. I know I've still got a bit to go because there's a lot of 45s and some of them can be tri quite tricky to find. But if I can find them for a good price and in good condition, then I'll be good. <clears throat> uh, I got this from an Irvine charity shop, Ego by Elton John with Flintstone Boy. I don't think I have this track anywhere else um, on an album. So I have this in single because I don't think this was ever issued as a, on an album, this song. So nice to have it if that's the case. And this next one came from my Sockets record shop, a rare one that I was looking for as well. Roy Orbison, Running Scared, 1961 in London, with Love Hurts on the other side. One of my favourite Roy records. <clears throat> so now we've done the 45, we've got shorty albums, and as you can see, we've got a lot of ones to get through. So, hope you enjoy what we're going to show you, um, or like what you see. The first two I got on eBay, I went away on a holiday in the... Canary Islands and uh, I was hoping to get something there but I never really got to spend the money there because there wasn't really much to look at unfortunately. Well, in term there was a actually a music shop but it had been shut up for ages uh, so, hey ho. But when I got home I thought, oh, 
get something online. So the first one up I got is this with Elvis Rock and Roll number two. This is his second album, just known as Elvis in some countries. Uh, I got the CD of this one in the Elvis, one of the Elvis original albums collection, classics box set. So I thought I would um, get the vinyl because I do really like this album. This is a mono. This is a 62 pressing. It's a little bit beat battered. It's got a bit of a bit here and it's a bit sort of doggy at the back, but it's not bad. It's actually a really good album. I think I like this a bit more over the first album. I really like uh, Rip It Up, uh, Love Me, When My Blue Moon Turns to Gold Again, um, Paralyze is great as well, So Glad You're Mine, Ready Teddy, How's the World Treating You and How Do You Think I Feel is good as well. So yeah, a lot of great songs of this record. Um, there's the songs there. Mono. As I say, this is a 1962 repressing on the RCA Victor label because this was released on the HMV label originally in 57. So there's the vinyl. It's in good condition. It plays really well. So that one. Oh, and some of the plastic laminates sort of coming off a bit on this, but uh, hey though, it's nice to have this one, a copy of Elvis's second album, which is a great album, I'll say. And next one up, uh, which I got at the same time as the second one on eBay, um, Elvis Presley Rock and Roll. Now this is a uh, 1970s reissue of the UK first album, because the UK version had different track listings to, I'll just get it out, so I know I've got it, to this one. This is the US version of the first album, this one, and the UK version had different track listings as you can see there. They kind of altered the track listing a bit, but I like, I, I can really choose which one I prefer. I like them both. Um, again, this is 1972 uh, reissue uh, with a different cover to the original. That one I just showed you was the actual cover when it was issued on the HMV label in 1956. Um, and it's on the RCA Victor label orange. It does say electronically reprocessed, but this one actually doesn't sound too bad. Uh, this one actually sounds okay. Um, I know some of the Elvis electronic reprocess don't sound very good. And then these two I got together at my Socket Record Shop. Paradise Hawaiian Style. This is a soundtrack to a film that Elvis appeared in in 1966. This is a 1980 RCA International reissue. I do have quite a few of these ones. It's got a nice cover. Really like the, that back, kind of background of Elvis. Uh, not a bad album. Uh, it's okay. Um, I quite like Sandcastles. Um, Dayton's alright. The title track was okay. This is my haven. The, 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 tra the track listing is kind of rearranged, so it's always hard to tell what's the actual track listing. But uh, I think I need to give this one a bit of a listen to try and refresh in my mind. Uh, but it's not bad. It was actually okay. Quite good. It's on the green RCA national label. Um, Yeah, it felt kind of, some of the tracks are quite short, but then again, they were written for films, so, um, so yeah, not bad album, not good. And this next one is, um, an original 60s pressing of an album, which I've got on CD from the, the original classic album classics that I got for Christmas, so I thought I'd get the vinyl of this one. Elvis is back. This is a stereo copy from 1960. Didn't think I was going to own one of these, but uh, it's nice to have an original copy of this in stereo, or in any form, mono or stereo. Um, that's the back. This album kind of just came out when Elvis, I think, got back from the army. He went to the studio and recorded some songs in the space of a few days, and then that was it. He had the album out inside, and it's on RCA in the stereo, <clears throat> and it's actually in quite good condition. So yeah, please pick that one up. Uh, yet to hear it, but I do know The Girl of My Best Friend because I have that on different albums. <clears throat> so there's that one, Elvis is back. And these next three I got together at a different time at Salt Shop. Elvis, the first live recordings. This is an album of like really early live performances in 55 and 56. So the stuff from probably from like the Louisiana Hayride. This was released in 1984, I think. This one, it's got a nice cover. Um, quite a short album though. They could have probably made us an EP or something, but 
it's good to have it on an album some of these early performances um it's a uh, it's a stereo surprisingly on the RCA silver and black label RCA international so I haven't heard it so I don't know what the sound quality of it will be like but it should hopefully be good or maybe listenable because I know 1950s recording technology hadn't really sort of developed yet um, so it should be listenable or okay next one up is Loving You again I have this on CD from a set I got at Christmas so it's nice to have the vinyl for this one quite a good album this one I really like uh, Mean Woman Blues Let Me Be Your Teddy Bear the title track got a whole lot of living to do have, uh, I Need You So yeah a lot of good songs of this album um, this is like his first soundtrack album, but it was his second film because Love Me Tender was his first, but that hadn't been issued as a soundtrack album uh, at the time, but uh, nice to have this one. This is a 1977 reissue, and it says all tracks electronically reprocessed, and it sounds okay on some, uh, but doesn't sound good on like the title track. The title tracks never sounded good in fake stereo, to be honest. This is the RC Orange label. <clears throat> So yeah, nice to have this one, Loving You, 1957 originally, but this is a 1977 uh, repress. The UK version of this one had just the songs from the film and Blueberry Hill, but the US version had the four additional songs that weren't in the film. Almost similar to what the Beatles would do with A Hard Day's Night and Help, they would have the soundtrack album on one side, and the other half would just have songs they recorded in the studio for the, like, the album, maybe. So yeah, let's have that one. And next one is Elvis, a Canadian tribute. This is a 1978 release. Um, I think it's an American pressing, I think. Uh, or I think it's American. Yeah. Uh, it's got a nice gold name written there. This has songs from like the time Elvis toured Canada um, in 57, and even some Canadian songwriters as well. Um, as it would turn out, you know, El this was the only country Elvis would get to tour in. You know, he never got to tour here in the UK, here in Scotland, or overseas. Um, which was a great shame, because he was definitely loved, but... Of course, as we all know, it was down to his manager, Colonel Tom Parker's immigration background stated that that wasn't to be. So, it's nice to have this one. And this is quite interesting because it's on coloured vinyl. My second Elvis coloured vinyl. And it's on gold vinyl, which is really nice to have. And as you can see, when you hold it to light, it kind of goes a bit yellowy on some occasions. But it's cool to have this on gold vinyl. I've also got an Elvis commemorative album, compilation album on gold vinyl, so that's cool to have another coloured vinyl of Elvis. I've got quite a few coloured vinyls in the collection of a lot of artists, so we'll see, so cool to have. It's always cool when I get that. Now the albums I got from the Bedford record shop. Elvis Separate Ways. This is one that quite a few people have um, in the collection. This is 1973, I think. It has a nice cover to it. I know the track Separate Ways and Always On My Mind, but the, an Old Shep was on the um, second album. Oh, maybe that's a different version, I'm not sure. Um, but it's nice to have this uh, this album. It's on the RCA Camden label. Oh, the Innocent's a bit torn at the bottom. So I need to give this one a play, but it should hopefully be an interesting listen. It's even got some stuff like I Slipped Out. Tumbled, I Stumbled, I Fell as well, which was an earlier song, I think. And I Met Her Today is an earlier song from somewhere. Um, so yeah, I need to kind of do a bit of research into these songs, some of these ones. The second one I've never seen before, and it's an import record. It's Elvis Presley, 40 plus grand success. This is a French k album. i never seen it before, and I just thought, yeah, I'll pick it up. And I found out it was £2, so I thought I would pick it up. Um, it's on the K-Tel label. One that I've never seen before. It, some songs are mono and some are stereo. Um, which is interesting that they did that. It's even got uh, Memphis, Tennessee on here, which is, I think was released as a standalone single, but he had intended to put out an album called Memphis, Tennessee with the song um, on it, uh, You're the Devil in Disguise, but I don't think that ever happened, that release. As I say, get the Double album. Nice to have it in good condition. And here's a non-Elvis purchase I picked up in the shop. The Art Garfunkel album, nice cover. This is a compilation album from 1984. I've got an Art Garfunkel CD as well. Uh, great CD, and I've got some of his solo albums on vinyl. This is a promo from CBS, which is nice to have. And it's actually in really good condition, this one. It's got a really nice sort of, nice sort of shiny cover to it. The back's much the same. 
this is Songs. And again, it's CBS, like I say. I do have a few of these on vinyl, and I think I know quite all of these, these songs. I don't think I've had actual single. I need to look at some of these, because um, some of these I probably don't know. Um, so I need to look at some of my other Art Garfunkel albums and see what's where they come from. Be yeah, good to have that one, one that I've been looking for for quite a while, but good to find it in good condition. And this record I've been looking for for a long time, and never managed to find it until recently in the record shop in Bedford. Um, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Heart Play, Unfinished Dialogue. I know quite a few Beatles fans will own this in their collection. This is from like 1983, I think. It's like a selection of interviews that John gave around about 1980, when he was just kind of coming out of the retirement phase and becoming back into music again uh, with Double Fantasy. Um, this is a US pressing, but it's good to have. It comes with a uh, little insert with all the sections from Yoko. And it's on Polydor. The first release on Polydor, because they didn't, they also did um, Milk and Honey um, on that Polydor label as well. Which was, I think, after this one. They also had uh, Ringo's uh, Goodnight Vienna album, which I suppose I could have got, but I didn't. But uh, I'll hopefully look out that one. There's still a lot of solo Beatles albums I'm actually missing and hopefully going to find. I've actually just ordered one, the Now, uh, which is Paul McCartney's Chaos and Creation on vinyl. But um, it's yet to come in, but once that comes in, I'll show it in the next vinyl update. But and that is a good album, that one, Chaos and Creation, because I did hear it a few years ago in CD, and it is a good album. So yeah, good to have this one, really pleased to have it. There's still a few John Lennon items I'm missing, like the Men Love Avenue compilation and Sometime in New York City. I know that's not a great album, but you kind of need to get it for the collection. And this next one I got from a charity shop in Harpenden. The very best of Roy Orbison. This is a 1966 compilation. It's stereo. It's on the Monument label. And um, I showed one similar uh, with, a, with a different cover um, from the 70s, which was this one. Well, this is the original cover from 1966. I kind of got it because it was the original copy. Um, I'll just put it back in where it should be. Hang on a second. Yeah, I think I explained the story about it in my, in my last final update, but this was put out after Roy had left Monument for MGM, and um, they'd been putting out a number of singles and albums, even though Roy had left the label, including a compilation called Orby Songs, uh, which I've got over there. And then MGM found out this record was out, and this was the final straw for them, and they sued Monument, and they wouldn't release anything, and Monument didn't release anything as a part of an agreement that they wouldn't release anything for five years until the all-time greatest hits in 1972. So, it's good to have this one. It's got a nice kind of cover. Bit of ring wear to it, but it's not too bad, but uh, the cover's in a bit better condition than the record, I would say. I'll show you the record. Here's the inner sleeve with a couple of other Roy Orbison albums, including that one, which I've got, and that one, which I'm just showing. It's on the monument. Oi! Drop me there. It's on the monument label, and as you can see, it's probably not, but it is quite scratchy. But I played it all the way through, and it actually plays all the way through. It doesn't jump, it doesn't skip, it plays all the way through with no problems. It's got a, quite a thick sort of thin edge to it, but it's quite a nice vinyl, that one. But it plays all the way through, it doesn't jump, doesn't skip, pop, it does, you know, crackle, but nothing unlistenable, it plays all the way through, it plays fine, and so I'm really pleased to have that one, so not bad for a pound, and these next few purchases come from my socket record shop, bar two, one was a charity shop find, and the other was an eBay find, so these first, these three come from socket record shop that I bought together, essential Elvis Presley, now these are alternate versions, of songs that appeared in Love, Love Me Tender, Jailhouse Rock, and Loving You. Um, this appeared in the 80s, uh, released in It's mono. They're like alternate takes, unreleased versions um, of some of these songs. So it's really interesting to find these on vinyl, which you don't get too often. I like the kind of design of this one. They make it look like a 60s album with like the wee small mono at the corner, and then mono at the back as well. So I kind of like what they did there, made it into a design. It's a gatefold sleeve. I know there's like two other volumes of this on vinyl, but they're difficult to get. But I'm still, again, I'm keeping my eye and fingers crossed for these albums. Uh, I'm sure they're going to turn up somehow, somewhere. Uh, and it's on the RCA label. I really like the fact that they did it like this. A 
And there's also a compilation album that came out in 1990 called The Great Performances, which again is hard to find, but again I'm still keeping my eye out for that album when it comes, if, uh, if I can find it, for a good price. And it even came with this ad, this copy, for the All Time Greatest Hits Elvis album, which I have on vinyl as well. So, cool, really interesting that the person that owned this before me probably decided to include it for this record. It's yeah, nice to have this one. And then we have um, a compilation called Welcome to My World, 1977. I think this was just put out before the Moody Blue album and before Elvis's death. Um, so yeah, cool to have this one. I know all these have previously been released bar I Can't Stop Loving You, which had been the, unre the then unreleased afternoon performance at Madison Square Garden, Saturday afternoon performance in June 1972, which I've got the entire performance of on the CD. So, uh, some of these have already been released, so, but nice to have this one, it's a nice cover. On RCA. See, yeah, a nice cover. And this next one is a non Elvis purchase, it's Johnny Cash, America, a 200 your salute in um, in his history and s no story and song rather. Um, I've never I've, I've seen this cover a few times, but I've never seen a copy of the actual album, which is, goes for a lot for these Johnny Cash albums. There's a lot of these which I've seen the covers of, but I've never seen like a vinyl copy of them until I see them in, in a shop. So this is quite a, I don't know if it's rare, but it may be. I don't know. Um, it's a gatefold sleeve. It's a tracks. This came out in nineteen seventy. Two. Yeah. And it comes out the side similar to the uh, Beatles for Sale album. And it's on this inner sleeve. And it's um, on CBS. Actually, it's got like a lot of like dialogue. There's some like. Like a lot of Johnny Cash's content albums, are, there's like track, dialogue, track, dialogue, track, vice versa, vice versa. Um, so, yeah. The, the, this is probably another one of those like concept albums that he made in his career. This like things like the Rambler, the Holy Land, uh, Ballads of the True West, I think. Um, that those kind of albums. So yeah, nice to have this one. This is another kind of con well, it's a soundtrack album to a film that Johnny Cash I think worked on and appeared in, The Gospel Road, 1973 on CBS. This is an original copy, it has a four page booklet in the middle. Not much to it. Um, double LP on CBS. On a different kind of CBS label, because the normally that wee logo's at the centre, but this one's at the top. So, quite interesting. Second LP is also the same, the first LP, this is the second record I showed. First LP is the same, so I won't show that one. Yeah, seen this before my Sockers record shop, but I haven't really, but I didn't pick it up. But I did see it at the charity shop for a cheap price in Irvine, so I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up, why not? His next, this next one comes from Sockers record shop. One comes from eBay, and last two, uh, we've got quite a few left, so. It happened at the World's Fair 1963 soundtrack album, Elvis. This came from the Sockers record shop. Quite a good one, I really like, uh, Beyond the Bend, they remind, they remind me too much of you, One Broken Heart for Sale, I'm Falling in Love Tonight, and Happy Ending, and How Would You Like to Be. Uh, nice cover, this one. This again is a 1980 reissue on the RCA International label. But it's it's nice to have. Um, it's quite a good album, soundtrack album. Um, 1963, like I say. Um, so yeah, pleased to have this one. Um, it happened at the World's Fair. Um, again, I have not seen the films, some of these, because I don't have yet owned them, but when I get the DVDs, I'll probably watch them of the film, like I say. And this is an eBay purchase. Johnny Cash sings the songs that made him famous. This is, I think, his second Sun album uh, on the London label. Um, really nice to find this in quite good condition, actually. Um, it's not in too bad nick, actually, for its age, 1959, so it's like nearly 60 year old album. Difficult to believe. Um, it's a mono, I think. It doesn't say mono or stereo, so it likely will be mono. Um, 
So it's got a nice cover, a nice picture of Johnny on the front. It's on the uh, London American Recordings label. The record's a little bit... It's got some marks on it, but it plays, again, like the Roy Orbison one I showed you, this plays well all the way through. No skips, jumps. It does crackle, but again, nothing that's going to be unlistenable. So yeah, really pleased to have this one, because this one is in... Quite hard to get hold of these ones, but I managed to find it for a good price on eBay. I'm still on the lookout for his first album, which was Johnny Cash with his hot and blue guitar. But again, that's a hard one to find. Um, but again, if I can find it for a good price and in good condition, yeah, I'll pick it up. Uh, like with a lot of these albums. So yeah, pleased to find this one. Uh, these two come from my Sawcoach record shop at a different time, and the last two I'm going to show come from the Adrossan Charity Shop. Elvis Potluck. Potluck with Elvis, it's called. Uh, 1962 album. Um, this has some songs, I know Kiss Me Quick, um, and that's someone you never forget, because I heard that on YouTube. Um, so there's a few songs I've yet to hear, but hopefully them. It's got, back it's got these albums on it, um, G.I. Blues, Blue Hawaii, His Hand in Mine, and Some for Everyone. I've got those three on vinyl, but I've yet to find something from everybody. I know that my Soccer Director has a copy of it, so if it's still there, I'll probably pick it up. It's got the EP of Follow That Dream, which I'll hopefully try and find. Um, this is a 1977 reissue because it's got this Elvis catalogue in his sleeve and it's on this label because I've got a similar reissue of Spin Outs as well uh, on this label so that's how I know from doing research on these albums. So there's all the catalogue in his sleeves. It's quite interesting to point out what ones I've got and what ones I've not haven't but hopefully I'll find them quite soon. Those ones. Or I'll hopefully find them. Yeah. You're nice to have this one, Potluck. The, the strange thing about Potluck was that Potluck with Elvis didn't have any singles at the time. Kiss Me Quick wasn't until 1963, and Suspicion on this album, I know that one too, Suspicion was issued as a single uh, in 1976 for the album Elvis in Demand. So, I don't know why they didn't put any singles at the time, but who knows who was behind that. Next up is Bob Dylan Empire, Empire Brulesque, 1985 album. Uh, one I don't know too well, but um, again, I haven't seen this one before, but uh, so I thought I'd pick up in the shop when I saw it. Um, so yeah, nice to have this this record as a back. 985 on CBS as usual. On this label. So yeah, looking at the inner sleeve and who plays what, you've got Mick Taylor, guitar player for the Rolling Stones. There's Benmont Tension, Mike Campbell from Tom Petty's band, The Heartbreakers, which will be interesting. So this might be a good one if, if you've got those people on, kind of people on board. Um, so yeah, nice to have that one. Empire Burlesque. These next two are from the same artist. I've got them two together. Dean Martin's Greatest Hits Volume 2 and The Best of Dean Martin. This Dean Martin one focuses on the reprise songs. Um, there's hopefully a volume, there is a volume one, I've done a research, so I'm hoping to find volume one um, of that one, the Reprise label. And this one has the Capital stuff, because Dean Martin was on both Reprise and Capital um, in like the 50s, in like the 50s and 60s. Um, it's Capital, orange label and stereo, but I think this one, this one was released in 1968, and this one, I've done a bit of research and this one was 69, so these both came out in the same time era. Once I find volume one, I think that'll be it with me, me and the Dean Martin uh, albums. Hits of his are all I need. But I do like him, but the greatest hits albums are all I need. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I've bought quite a lot over the last month, I will admit. Um, I'm kind of thinking that um, I'm going to try and cut down on the spending and spend it maybe once or twice a week. And get stuff once and twice a week. Um, and hopefully I'll kind of pick it up once I get a bit more money. Because my birthday will be in June, so I'm kind of hoping I'll get a lot of money for that. Um, I'll, I definitely will. <laughs> but uh, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.